Hey guys, welcome back. So a common question that gardeners have this time of year, late summer, when is it time to pull out those tomato plants? And this is a good sign, right? We got worms in here, probably some type of cutworm, army worm. Let's go look for some more signs of when is it time to think about pulling out those really tired summer tomato plants. So how do you know when it's time? Well, we're gonna start with this Ace 55. He is a determinate tomato and he actually looks really good considering his bottom growth looks very sparse and some of that is just me removing some of the diseased and dying uh, sections that need to come off but you can see up here we have a lot of gorgeous new growth and there are a lot of flower buds so I'm actually not going to be removing this guy even though here's a whole bunch more I really thought I was. What I am going to do, remove any fruit that are blushing or ripening, and I'm going to clean up. You can see the, the branching structure of a determinate, how it's very much like a bush. I'm going to go ahead and pause and show you a clip of this plant probably like a three, four weeks ago, maybe a little bit longer, how well and healthy it looked. Um, but it actually still looks really healthy to me and uh, so he's staying we're just going to clean him up I don't see any reason to remove him because he is going to put off a lot of new fruit for me now this poor plant here he is coming out he has been through the ringer we've had non-stop deer issues with this plant and the hornworms have been especially fond and I just saw one where did he go oh there's two there is one eating and then there was a teeny weeny baby one. Oh, there it is and I'm like okay where are all of my bird friends because they have helped me so much this summer I have not had to remove physically myself any hornworms um, they've eaten them all for me just picked them off the plants I've actually seen them do it just looking out my kitchen window where I'm looking at my other tomatoes out back. See birds fly down, take them, take off those hornworms. So this plant's coming out. And let's see. This plant's coming out. Although it's trying to trick me a little bit. So this one is trying to put off some flowers. Ugh. So I'm still going to remove it. You can see it's very much diseased at this point. We're going to remove them. This plant is coming out, even though I would only get, what, four or five fruits, and they're really small. They're not my favorite. We're going to remove it. Let's see what's going on in the raised bed area. Still got a decent amount of cherry tomatoes trying to develop and turn colors. So they're going to stay. I'm just going to clean up all the dead material. Now this bed may be a different story. What I'm thinking I'm going to do is go ahead and remove all of the fruit that are blushing and at maturity and maybe clear this whole bed out and we'll plant Brussels sprout starts. Um, I mean you gotta think what point do you keep going for one or two fruits? versus using this space to plant something for fall. I've got exactly two months or less, we'll say seven to eight weeks before my first frost date. We really need to start using the spaces for fall. So most likely everything in this bed will be coming out ASAP. Um, these tomatoes here, they can stay because what I'm gonna do is plant pea seeds all through here and the peas can actually just grow up these vines uh, if they want to and they will and uh, so we'll leave these for now they've done really well but they've split non-stop but they taste fairly well fairly decent and come October I'm probably gonna want some tomatoes so these guys can stay you can see this is a um, indigo rose no it isn't that's Queen of the Night it's looking a little rough it's back here in a container 
This will also be coming out very soon. All right, here is another viewpoint of the raised bed tomatoes. These are the ones I just said we're gonna take out. You can see lots of diseased stem, branches, leaves. Um, there's still some fruit that I can harvest, but overall, these guys have really been through the ringer. Now I do still see fruit back in there developing, but at this point, because there's so much disease, I think it's best to come on out. Let's just pull these plants and get something new going. Um, there's a lot of blight. You know, it's hot here. It's humid most of the summer. In fact, today we're going up to 100, and it is the very end of August. Um, it's just these tomatoes really go through the ringer. So there's septoria, lots of that going on. I see some blight. And um, it's just time. It is time. But we still got, what, one, two, three, four, five fruits we can pick. Peppers are still looking good, though. So let's move on to the backyard tomatoes. And that tomato right there is um, black creme. It's done phenomenal. We're going to go have a look at it. Okay, so here we are in the backyard. This is my black creme that has been growing in low part sun. And I can see one, two, three, four, five, like five-ish tomatoes that I could probably pick really soon, maybe six. I think I see one hiding. Overall, minimal disease. Now, it did get a little bit of probably like maybe some blight or maybe just that's from weather changes. Uh, we had a lot of drought and heat. Um, in the, I guess, mid to early summer. But it seems to be kind of self-healing itself and just kind of letting these leaves just kind of dry up, fall off. And it's just growing. It's continued to grow. Oh, I've got babies over here too. Look at that. So this guy is going to stay. The, I see a bean vine up here too. Because they're right next to my beans. Um... Yeah, this plant's gonna stay. It's um, moderately still healthy, so no reason to take it out. Now these guys here uh, to the left of the bean patch area, although they've been kind of scrawny all season, I'm just gonna leave them for now. I don't really have anything to put in the place of them, so they're not super diseased, and they're putting off new growth. Here's a little baby. I'm just going to let them be and see what they can do because most of the foliage um, is fairly healthy at this point. I mean, there's some old blight issues there that I'll just cut off. And uh, yeah, this guy, this is that same tomato variety, Artisan Blush, that likes to split. It's definitely growing, definitely wanting to spread and... Uh, just keep going for me. There's some way down in there. So these guys here are the ones that I'm really thinking about. It is time to maybe take them out. At least give them like a, a little stay just to get a few of the fruits mature. Oh. This is actually the plant that I pulled that tomato off of that had the army worms inside of it. Um, so there's about, oh gosh, five, six, tomatoes that are not mature. They are still growing and developing. Um, but you can see there's a lot of disease on the plant. So I think I can keep it alive until we get these mature, at least until they start to blush after they're fully developed. But what I'm probably going to do is I will come in here, I will remove the diseased foliage and I will probably go ahead and pinch off flowers that are up there. Um, you can see hornworms have been up there as well. These are the plants where I can see the birds come in when I'm at the kitchen window and they just pluck the hornworms off. Um, so I'll probably apply that treatment to every one of these because they all have similar um, disease going on. Some worse than others. This one only has one fruit, so I could actually probably just go ahead and take this whole plant out 
and not feel bad about doing that because I don't think it's going to make it much longer. You can see how I pruned it all along its development the last couple months. This one has some fruit. Actually, this one has started to blush, so I could even go ahead and pick that one if I wanted to. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do the same treatment to him because they're just very tired at this point. I did give them a little fertilizer with nitrogen like a day and a half, two days ago, just to kind of get them boosted so that I can let them live just a little longer because I really want these tomatoes. And then I've got a couple um, tomatoes on my green stalks. And probably this one, because it's got so many new flowers here, I think eight weeks might be enough time to get these developed to at least full growth so I can pick them green. I'm going to let this guy keep going, but the one over on that side, I may go ahead and pull because it doesn't have as much um, healthy growth. It has more disease on it and not as many flowers. Um, I did just pick a tomato off of this one a couple days ago. So I will do the same thing. I will cut off all the dead, not dead, the diseased foliage and uh, get some airflow going through here. Maybe give it another, um, well, actually, I gave him some fertilizer, too. I did. I did give him some, but I didn't give that one over there any. But with that one gone, he'll have more resources down in that green stalk. And I think that'll help him. I've got lots of peppers I need to get out here and pick. My peppers, usually this time of year, is when they're coming into their own. It's just the tomatoes that start to give me issues. And I'm like, okay, is it time for them to get pulled? Like this um, geranium kiss, he is actually starting to put off new growth, new flowers. So may just end up cleaning him up as well and uh, hope for the best. So that's it for this video, guys. Those are the signs that I look for uh, when I'm kind of making a choice. Do I keep this plant in the ground? Do I take it out to make room for fall items? Is it just time to retire this plant? Is it so disease ridden? Or does it have some life left in it? So, you know, there's a lot of things you have to think about. A lot of options, because um, the ultimate goal is to eat more tomatoes, right? <laughs> so that's it. I uh, hope you're having a great gardening week and I will talk to you later. If you have questions, just post them down below and I'll talk to you soon.